world's foremost lab for this type of virology study unleash the pandemic that reflects very poorly not just on this lab but on virologists who by and large circled the wagons to protect the reputation of the Wuhan clinic. The year before the outbreak, the Wuhan Institute, working with U.S. partners, had proposed creating viruses with the defining features of what became known as COVID. Right? The Wuhan lab pursued this work under low biosafety conditions, could not have contained an airborne virus as infectious as COVID. So people don't want to be regulated, generally speaking. People don't want to be intruded upon. People don't want to be investigated. And people don't want to jump through all sorts of hoops to do the things that they want to do. A hypothesis that COVID came from an animal of the Hunan seafood market in Wuhan is not supported by strong evidence. Key evidence that would be expected if the virus had emerged from the wildlife trade is still missing. Um, but what, what Bob Gary is saying is that in all of the years, even before the pandemic, the scientists who have been studying the wildlife and the bats all around that area and other parts of China have not been able to find any animals infected with SARS-2-like viruses, uh, except for pangolins far down in South China. They have not found any bats in the area that carry this type of viruses. And so he's saying that all of that evidence must have been covered up. <laughs> Either that or we have been exceedingly unlucky that suddenly a virus with this furing cleavage site just pops up, boom, and leaves no trace across the rest of China in the years leading up to or after the pandemic. So it, it requires a massive conspiracy across tons of scientists, wildlife traders, hospitals, like the government. So I, I, I think that that conspiracy is much... So remember how for years I was on my high horse that the only legitimate grounds for debate are the grounds of facts and the grounds of logic. But then I, I read a contrary perspective saying that in, in the real world we have to often make decisions as a, using a heuristic of how credible are the individuals in you know whatever matter that we're arguing about. So how credible is this woman, uh, Alina Chan? And so let's go to X, right? We're going for the top, top posts. So Peter Hotez trashes Alina Chan's New York Times op-ed. But I understand if New York Times opinion wants to go into competition with Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, and become the Wall Street Journal opinion light. It shouldn't do this at the expense of American scientists and science pick another topic, please. So who is Professor Peter Hotez? Now, he is not an expert either in virology. He's a pediatrician. He is a prestigious man. He served as president of the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, founding editor of Neglected Tropical Diseases, right? co-director of Parasites Without Borders. He's Jewish. He's a big advocate of uh, vaccines, and he was a big talking head during the pandemic. So he warned about the dangers of misinformation. Oh, he said that uh, contrary to popular belief, more younger adults than expected would be hospitalized due to the outbreak of COVID-19. And I, I believe he was right, right? Uh, approximately more than 2,000 Americans under the age of 18 died from covid in 2020, he warned against optimistic COVID-19 vaccine timelines, arguing that rushing could cause problems. August 7, 2020, he said that the U.S. can be affected by COVID-19 for years and years, even after Americans are vaccinated. He was right again. He blamed the federal government for not taking sufficient action to contain the spread of virus. All right, then we've got another scientist, Angela Rasmussen, uh, who essentially argues that uh, if you're arguing for the lab leak, you're, you're being racist. Concluding that this deletion was to obscure these sequences or there was some other misconduct requires the reader to also assume that Chinese scientists are inherently untrustworthy. It relies on racist stereotypes, right? I don't find that a strong argument, Alina Chan. Chinese government is not people of Chinese descent. Otherwise, can only predominantly white countries' governments be criticized without being racist. No kidding. But this doesn't invite us to criticize the government, and it's a known fact that the Chinese Communist Party suppresses info for reasons. This invites us to criticize the scientists and heavily implies it's because they aren't trustworthy. Where's the evidence they are not? There's no evidence that any misconduct occurred here. These claims rely on racist stereotypes. And then virologist uh, claims Angela Rasmussen. So she's a virologist, right? She's part of circling the wagons against this outsider, Lena Chan. I never argued that you or other lub leak proponents should be silenced. Just that those with legitimate expertise call BS where they see it. And those with legitimate expertise are those who... Her crowd says have legitimate expertise. All right, Peter Jacobs thinks that something's insane, but Peter Jacobs has no expertise in 
this area. It's only because of people like Alina Chen that Fauci is now forced to admit that the lab leak theory is not a conspiracy. Then we have all these, yeah, ad hominem attacks by virologist Angela Rasmussen. All right. So Angela Rasmussen, virologist, says, LOL, we have a ragtag collection of internet randos with no subject matter expertise looking to be celebrated as citizen sleuths. There has since been a schism with a battle over the brand between factions with different motivations. Do they want attention or do they want money? So this is so typical of the contempt, the same sort of contempt that you heard in that journalistic expose of Pat McAfee. Again, Angela Rasmussen, a virologist filled with contempt for those who propose lab leak. Alina Chan and Matt Ridley wrote a dumb book that was critically panned as one long treatise of just asking questions. Everything they say is in service of boosting sales of this odious attempt to equate science with sea lioning. I don't know what sea lioning is. I could go on and on. It's not about the individuals. It's about their collective purpose to attack the scientific process that hinders them from advancing their own agendas. Again, so like that journalistic critique of Pat McAfee, was he didn't follow a journalistic process. This virologist is complaining that lab leak advocates are not following virology scientific process. So when you see demands, people provide a bunch of self-interested bad actors with carte blanche access to their emails and explain their thought process. See it for what it is, a naked attempt to exploit public data for personal gain. Right. So virologists don't want their emails uh, revealed to the public. Right? They don't want extra scrutiny. They don't want to have their privileges reduced. Right, here are some examples of abuse and harassment of Alina Chan. One on the left is from a science blogger. The other is an assistant biology professor and author of virology. Nobody has quickly forgotten about the dead you lying grifter. The world is still reeling and dealing with the trauma of the pandemic. Save your cheap emotional manipulations, you moronic psychopath. Get your clicks doing something else. Right? That's, that's his response to her lab leak hypothesis. Pretty nasty. And now we have an assistant biology professor and author of the book Virology. How can I stay relevant by making this about AI? So, so much contempt from virologists for Alina Chan, right? Alina Chan says, I do not disagree with people who see the actions of the proximal origin authors as fraud. I believe there should be professional accountability. 